Hello everyone! Welcome to the Factions of Soul How to Play video. Factions of Soul is a 1-4 to four player asymmetric engine building Euro inspired board game where you'll zoom around the solar system trying to compete to win the favor and fortune of ultra billionaire Mark Megacore. We are here at Snakes and Lattes, a wonderful board game cafe in Chicago. I definitely recommend checking them out. They have tons of locations across the nation and they have been so helpful to the Factions of Soul team. They're a real friend of the company. Your first time playing Factions of Soul, you have two main options. You can either play the full game or you can play a pared down first time player version if you'd like to get a little bit of a better handle on the rules before adding in some more complicated mechanics. Now, this how to play video is going to be geared towards those first time players but we're including rules for the full game as well for our Greetings from Pluto expansion and for our Underdogs expansion. Without further ado, let's begin! To start, you're going to place our solar system board in the center of your table where it's easily accessible to all players. Then, for your first time playing, go ahead and remove Uranus and Neptune from the game permanently along with their respective decks. Next, each player is going to pick one ship of their choice, excluding the dark blue ship, that's only for the androids faction, which we'll get to at the end of the video, and take their matching colored cubes and crystals. Once that's completed, place each planet in planetary order on the prime axis. Now the game board is made up of orbital rings, which are the circles along which planets orbit. Each circle has a series of nodes on it, which are the smaller circles that planets may rest on. The prime axis is the unbroken line, starting from the sun, leading all the way to the edge of the game board. I'm going to place first Mercury, then Venus, then Earth, and Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. If you're having trouble remembering which planets go on which rings, you can also flip the planets upside down for a helpful reminder of both what the planets do, as well as the color of the orbital ring that they are located on. The same color is shown on their cards as well, for another hint. Once you've placed all the planets on the prime axis, go ahead and draw a card from the top of each deck. In the bottom right-hand corner of every card, there is a small number. This number represents the amount of steps that I will move each planet to randomize their starting positions. A step is the distance between two nodes on a planet's orbital ring. So I drew a one for Mercury, which means I will move Mercury one step counterclockwise, the same direction that planets orbit in the real solar system. Next for Venus, I drew a two, so I will move it two steps. For Earth, I drew a zero, which means I will move it zero steps. I'm going to skip Mars because there is no Mars deck. For Jupiter, I drew a four, one, two, three, four. And finally, Saturn, I drew a two. Now Mars doesn't have a deck, so instead I'm going to flip over an asteroid and move Mars the matching number of spaces. Now return all the cards to the decks, shuffle them, and remove the Earth deck from the game. Earth doesn't have a deck the first time you play. Now that the planets are set up, if this is your first time opening this copy of Factions of Soul, you're good to go. If it's not, and you're playing the first time player version, you'll want to search through the Jupiter and Saturn decks. Those numbers in the bottom right hand corner, some are underlined. That means that these cards are meant for the full game, so go ahead and remove any of those cards from play. Once that's completed, if you're playing a one or two player game, search through the Saturn deck and remove any additional cards which have a star in the upper right hand corner. These rely on having more than two players. Finally, take the top three cards of the Jupiter deck and place them face up to form the exoplanet market. Choose the player who is most likely to be abducted by aliens and give them the leader token. If you can't decide who that is, rolling a die is fine as well. Each player, starting with the player to the right of the leader and proceeding counterclockwise, will select one of the unselected factions from the game and take their faction mat. If this is your first time playing the game, you should select from Zealots of Soul, who I'll be playing today, Megacore Incorporated, Standard Ordinary People, Daughters of Einstein, or Quantum Tunnelers. The other three will remain out of play until you've played another time. In a two or three player game, I will remove all the asteroid tiles with stars on them from the game. Then I will shuffle the asteroid tiles together and place one in each sector of the asteroid belt denoted by the little asteroids on the game board. It's between the Mars and Jupiter orbital rings. Now, a sector is a space between two orbital rings with a line on either side of it. 
It's the empty spaces here on the game board. So I'll place one asteroid in each of these eight sectors along the asteroid belt. And because I'm currently demoing a four player game, I will also place one asteroid in each part of the Kuiper belt. The Kuiper belt are the four quadrants on the outmost part of the board beyond Neptune's orbital ring. Players may not go into these spaces, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Once all the asteroids are set up, I'm going to place my ship adjacent to the starting planet denoted on my faction sheet, which in my case, as Zealots of Soul, is Mercury. It's going to go in one of the three sectors adjacent to Mercury right now. Players will then take 16 energy of their matching color and place it in their batteries. Energy comes in ones, shown by cubes, and fours, shown by crystals. I like to start my game with 12 cubes and one crystal. I find that it's a good mix. And finally, players will take four resources and place them in their cargo holds. With that, you're ready to begin playing Factions of Soul. Your objective in Factions of Soul is to gain victory points by building machines, exploring exoplanets, completing secret objectives, and gaining resources. All of this is in the hopes to impress Mark Megacore, the ultra billionaire, to win his interplanetary fortune. Gameplay in Factions of Soul is split up into three eras, each of which has two phases, the main phase and the upkeep phase. We're going to focus on the main phase for now. In the main phase, starting with the leader and proceeding clockwise, players will take turns. A turn consists of three parts in this order, trading, movement, and action. Let's start with movement. Players use energy to move around the game board. To move into an empty sector, players must place one more energy than is already there. So if I wanted to move to Mars right now, I would see that this is an empty sector containing zero energy, and I would place one more than zero, which is one. I'm going to do the same again here, and then I will move my ship next to Mars. Now, if I wanted to repeat that movement pattern and return in exactly the same way that I came, I would look at the sector, see there is one, and place one more than one, which is two. And then back into this empty space, I'll place one again. Now, movement doesn't care about what color energy is there. So if the orange player now wants to move, they're going to see that there is three energy, place one more than three, which is four, and then one more than one, which is two. This rule remains the same, except if you are moving into empty sectors in the outer ring. The outer ring is the further reaches of space where the distances are vast. So empty sectors are going to cost two energy instead of one. The outer ring is everything beyond the Mars orbit, which is denoted by a glowing red line. So if I moved to the far side of Jupiter now, I would place one into this empty sector, one into this one. And now as I reach the asteroid belt, Instead, I'm going to place two and two. Once there is already energy in a sector in the outer ring, movement behaves as normal. So as I return, I place three here, not four. There are a few more aspects of movement that we're going to cover a little later in the video. So if you want to learn about orbiting, wormholes, or rescuing, click on any of the cards on screen now. After taking a movement, a player may take an action. Actions consist of mining asteroids, using planets or any other printed ability that says as an action. We're going to start with mining asteroids because they're the main way to gain resources in Factions of Soul, which are essential for scoring victory points. To mine an asteroid, simply use your action in a space containing an asteroid, flip it over and gain the listed resources. To gain resources, take them from the supply and put them into your cargo holds, but be warned, you can never hold more resources than you have capacity. My resource capacity is four, and thus I cannot gain any resources. At any point, you can burn one resource to gain one energy. To burn a resource, place it into the supply, and to gain an energy, take it from the supply. But this is a bad trade. You probably don't want to do it if you can help it, only if you're in a tight spot. If there are asteroids in the Kuiper Belt, you can mine them from adjacent sectors. The Kuiper Belt itself is not a sector. Players can't move into it, but any space adjacent to that quadrant can be considered a space containing an asteroid. Next, we're going to talk about using planets. To use a planet, you must end your movement in a sector adjacent to that planet, have placed energy adjacent to that planet this turn, and take your action. Note that this is different from using asteroids. To mine an asteroid, you don't have to take a movement that turn, but you must always keep moving to use planets and have placed energy adjacent to them on the turn that you use them. We're going to start with Mercury, the innermost planet to the sun. 
If you flip Mercury over, you can see the energy symbol, which tells you that it is used for gaining energy. To use Mercury, you simply gain the top card of the Mercury deck, meaning draw it, and gain the amount of energy listed for your battery level. At the start of the game, each player has an alpha battery, so in this case, I'll gain 12. But if I had upgraded my batteries to beta, I'd gain 15, or gamma would give me 18. Burn, or discard, your card. Note that Mercury is the only exception to the rule I mentioned earlier about using planets. If you are adjacent to Mercury, you may forfeit your movement and your action in order to use it. So, instead of moving adjacent to Mercury every single time, forcing you to spend energy to gain it, you can just keep using it over and over again as many times as you would like. When the Mercury deck is depleted and all eight cards have been drawn, reshuffle the deck. This is done when any planet deck is depleted, but something that is specific to Mercury is that once you shuffle the deck, you will move each planet one step, starting with the innermost planet and moving outwards. If you are adjacent to a planet, whenever it moves, you can orbit with it. This means that at no cost, you can slingshot into a position adjacent to its new position. So if Mercury moves there, I'm going to orbit here. Venus will move here. I'm going to orbit along with it. Earth moves, I'm going to orbit with it. Mars moves, I'm going to orbit all the way to Jupiter. And now I suddenly find myself in the Saturn orbital ring at no energy cost to myself. Then of course, I'll move Saturn as well, but no one's over there, so we don't care as much. If you find yourself stranded in space with no easy way back to Mercury to gain energy, you can teleport back at any time, but it comes at a cost, a rescue token, worth negative 15 victory points. Don't worry though, your first time playing Factions of Soul, each player gets one free rescue without gaining a rescue token. Another very important planet is Mars. At Mars, you can spend any amount of resources to gain one upgrade for every two resources spent. Each upgrade is worth one victory point, and upgrades are part of machines. Machines are columns or rows of squares with lines between them. Once all upgrade slots in a machine are covered, including the victory point symbol, that machine is considered complete. A completed machine scores you additional points at the end of the game, and you immediately begin to gain its benefits. Every faction has the same five basic machines and one faction-specific faction machine, which we will get to at the end of the video. I'm now going to describe each machine, starting with batteries. Batteries has four levels. At the beginning of the game, you start with the alpha batteries, giving you a energy capacity of 16. When the beta upgrade is completed, you can now hold 20 energy. And when you visit Mercury, you will gain the beta amount of energy instead of the alpha. The same is true for gamma, which gives you 24 capacity, or delta, which gives you 32. Next is solar sails. Solar sails means that movement into all empty sectors costs one energy. This includes sectors in the outer ring super useful for getting to far-flung planets. Next is von Neumann probes. When you enter movement in a sector where you could mine an asteroid tile, you may mine it immediately at the end of your movement instead of using your action. This allows you to both mine the asteroid and use a planet on the same turn. An important note though is that you must gain the resources from the asteroid before using the planet. You can't spend all your resources at Mars and then immediately gain them back. Next is Alcubierre Drive. When it's completed, at the beginning of your movement, you may teleport to any sector between the same orbital rings as you. You may not use this machine in the asteroid belt because it is full of asteroids and highly dangerous. Each faction has a faction-specific machine, which we'll go over at the end of the video. And finally, there is cargo holds, which functions a bit differently than any other machine. Each upgrade in cargo holds lets you hold one more resource, even if the machine isn't technically completed, which is still denoted by the victory point symbol at the end of a cargo holds row. Next are Venus and Jupiter, which are part of the Explorers and Exoplanet pair. At Venus, you can use your action to burn X resources to gain X Explorer cards secretly into your hand. You must declare how many resources you are burning before gaining any Explorer cards. These Explorer cards are used to explore exoplanets at Jupiter. Jupiter has an exoplanet market, which is a selection of three face-up cards that you can pick between. When you use Jupiter, spend one resource and gain one of these face-up cards. When you gain a card, immediately resolve its effect. An effect is an either-or statement. You may choose not to resolve it, but in this case, for Safar, 
I will choose to take three energy from each player, gaining me a total of nine. The exoplanet doesn't do anything else until it is explored. You can place explorers on an exoplanet at any time, but once an explorer has been placed on an exoplanet, it cannot be moved. To explore an exoplanet, you must match or exceed the needed explorer's number stated in the upper left-hand corner of an explorer's card. Some explorers have a different modifier depending upon what type of exoplanet you are trying to explore. When an exoplanet is explored, you will gain production, which is listed on the bottom of the card, in this case, four energy and one resource. You gain this during the upkeep phase, in between eras, not immediately. Also, you cannot score points from exoplanets unless they are explored. Exoplanets score points through set collection, increasing exponentially depending upon type. We'll go over scoring points from exoplanets at the end of this explanation, but for now remember, you want to try and collect as many of the same type as you can. If at any point there are no exoplanets remaining in the market, immediately refresh it by placing three new exoplanets face up. Alternatively, you may use your action at Jupiter to refresh the exoplanet market. Discard all the face-up cards and place three new face-up in the market. This does not cost a resource, though it does cost your action. When you use Saturn, gain two secret objectives from the deck. Keep one in your hand and burn the other. You may never hold more than three secret objectives. If you ever hold more than three, immediately burn back down to three. What this means is if I use Saturn while having three in my hand, I draw two, burn one of them, and then I look at the four I hold and I burn one of those. Each secret objective has a timing showing when it can be completed. Once a secret objective is complete, you reveal it and place it face down on the table. Completed secret objectives do not count as part of your hand, so you may gain more afterwards. Some secret objectives have an end of game timing. I recommend holding off on keeping these until the final era, as it's good to try and complete other ones as the game goes on. The final planet in the first time player version is Earth. At Earth, Simply use your action and take the first player token if it is on the unclaimed face. If you take it, flip it to the claimed side. It will remain there until the era is over. That concludes all the planets in the first time player version of Factions of Soul. Then let's get to the final part of a turn. Again, first it's trading, then movement, and then action. That brings us to trading. At the start of your turn, you may trade energy, resources, uncompleted secret objectives, unexplored exoplanets, explorers, or upgrades with any other player at the table. Note, though, that if you're trading upgrades, they must remain within the same machine. You can't suddenly turn a batteries into an Alcubierre drive. Players will continue to take turns until they pass. On your turn, you must take a movement or an action. If you cannot or are unwilling to either take a movement or an action, you must pass. When you pass, you gain two energy, which is nice, but you must keep passing until the era is over. Once all players but one have passed, the remaining player has six turns to keep playing. This can be denoted on the turn counter punch out. I like to use an energy of my color and place it on the one on their first turn, then move it to the two on their second, so and so until the sixth turn, at which point they must pass, gaining two energy. Note though that if you take six turns before passing, all of your opponents are going to gain 12 energy, which can be a pretty big advantage. Once all players have passed, conclude the main phase and move to the upkeep phase. The upkeep phase has seven parts, but if this is your first time playing Factions of Soul, we're going to skip some of them. So in that case, we're going to start by producing energy and resources from all of our explored exoplanets. In this case, I'm gaining four energy and one resource from Safar. Then, if this is the third era, cease playing, tally up victory points, and decide the winner. We'll get to that in one moment, but we're going to assume this is your first or second era, in which case you will remove all energy from the game board, move all planets one step counterclockwise, starting with the innermost and moving outward, just as if you had drawn the last card of the Mercury deck, remove all asteroids from the game board, shuffle them, and place them back out onto the asteroid belt, and the Kuiper Belt if you're playing with one or four players. Then, if the leader token is on its unclaimed side, pass it one player to the left, and finally refresh the Jupiter market by discarding all three cards and placing three fresh ones out. The game is over, that means it's time for scoring. Gain one victory point for every two resources, gain one victory point for each upgrade in both complete and incomplete machines, four completed machines, gain victory points equal to the covered hexes at the end of each track. 
gain victory points equal to the total listed on your secret objectives, and for each type of planet, gain the amount of victory points listed on the table in the rulebook for planets of the same type. So if I had one volatile planet, I would gain one victory point. If I had two barren planets, I would also gain three victory points. And then if I had six bountiful planets, I would gain a total of 25 victory points for those bountiful planets. Tally up all your victory points and see who has the most. If there are two players with the same amount of points, the player with the most energy takes the victory. If the amount of energy is tied, then it's the player with the most secret objectives. If those players still have the same amount of secret objectives, it comes down to playing a whole new game of Factions of Soul. That concludes the first time player explanation of Factions of Soul. If you'd like to learn about Earth, Uranus, and Neptune, the full game, go ahead and keep on watching, but if not, enjoy your play. All right, let's jump into setup then. If this is a fresh copy of the game, go ahead and open the deck with the stop card at the start of it. Take the cards in there and add them to their respective decks. This is going to be what adds the underlined cards to the Jupiter and Saturn decks. Again, if you had separated these cards out, look at the bottom right hand corner and look for any underlined Saturn or Jupiter numbers that you can add back into the deck. Once this is complete, go ahead and take Uranus and Neptune. And when you are randomizing the starting positions of the planets, move them the amount of steps listed by the top card drawn from those decks. Then there are just two more steps for setup that are going to be done alongside when you create the exoplanet market at Jupiter. Note that the Earth deck has two separate set of cards, the Era 1 cards and the Era 2 cards. Shuffle these decks separately and take the top card of the Era 1 deck and the top card of the Era 2 deck. Place the Era 2 card face down, do not look at it, and place the Era 1 card face up on top of it. This will be the stellar event for the first era of the game, which we'll get to in gameplay. Then, create a Neptune market. This is known as the Research Market, and you'll deal three cards face up, just like you did for Jupiter to create the Exoplanet Market. Remove the Earth cards from the game, and continue with setup just as if you were playing a first-time game. There are three new actions in the full version of Factions of Soul associated with the planets, which now have their full abilities. We're going to start with Earth. When you use Earth, instead of gaining the leader token, you may vote on the era's stellar event. To vote, place one of your energy cubes from your supply on the chosen space and gain the corresponding reward. For example, at this place on tactical destabilization, I would gain two resources. Or, on the bottom, I would gain two secret objectives. If you're wondering what the icons mean, look at the back of the rulebook or at the other side of the planet tokens. Each player may only vote once per era, and if you're gaining an exoplanet or research card, make sure to gain it from the top of the deck instead of from the market. When a player places their vote on the leader token symbol, they take it and flip the claim side up. If the claim side is up, no player may gain the leader token, though they may still vote on that square. When the stellar event resolves, the outcome with more votes wins. In a tie, the leader decides. Resolving a stellar event is part of the upkeep phase, and we'll go over that at the end of this description. Next up is Uranus. Uranus has tech. Techs give you passive benefits that will increase your abilities throughout the duration of the game. When you use Uranus, look through the tech deck and gain a tech of your choice. Place this tech face up near your play mat. Each player may only hold one tech. If you would ever gain a tech but already hold one, burn one. Burned Uranus techs are returned to the deck. Some of them are once per era. If this is true, after using it, place it face down to denote that you have already used it for this era. Finally is Neptune. When you use your action at Neptune, gain a card from the research market. Research cards have a variety of benefits for players, including gaining energy, resources, upgrades, exoplanets, tech, and explorers. These cards are immediately used, unless they are an explorer, exoplanet, or tech card, in which case they are taken into your hand or placed in front of you. All burned research cards are placed in the Neptune discard. Note that the research market does not refresh when empty. The final change that comes in the full version of Factions of Soul is during the upkeep phase. At the start of the upkeep phase, before gaining production from explored exoplanets, you will resolve the stellar event. The side of the stellar event with the most votes on it is the one that comes into effect. If there is a tie, the leader decides which side they would like to happen. Note that the leader is the player who currently has the leader token. 
not the player who started this era. The other change is that during the exoplanet market refresh step, also refresh the research market. Well, that's it. You've learned all the parts in the full game of Factions of Soul. Keep watching if you want to learn about either of our expansions. Welcome to Greetings from Pluto, one of Factions of Soul's two expansions. Greetings from Pluto adds three new things to the game. Four new factions, the ability to play with a fifth player, and a whole new planet, Pluto, which gives you the ability to make alliances with factions outside of the game. We're going to get started with Greetings from Pluto's setup. The setup is going to proceed mostly in the same way. What you're seeing right now is a board right after we have completed the randomization of the planets. You're going to take the Pluto zone, which is the new game piece that has Pluto on it, and you are going to draw the top card of the Neptune deck, moving Pluto that many steps, just like you moved Neptune. In this case, it will be moved one, two, three, four steps. The final piece of setup is once you have picked factions, starting with the player to the right and proceeding counterclockwise, just as you did for faction selection, players will choose alliances. Each alliance will go into a market set on the outside of the game board, and once all alliances have been picked, shuffle the alliance deck and randomly add one to the pool. Now that setup is complete, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Pluto Zone, which adds three new sectors to the game board. These sectors are treated just like any other sectors in the Factions of Soul board. You must spend energy to move into them, and they are considered adjacent to the sectors that they are next to in the Neptune orbit. You can use Pluto from any of the three sectors adjacent to it, just like you would use any other planet. If Pluto moves, you move the entire Pluto sector, including the energy that's on it. When you use Pluto, you can gain an alliance from the pool selected at the start of the game. To gain an alliance, you must have completed its cost. So in the case of MechaCore Incorporated, which I want, I have to have at least five cargo holds upgraded. If that's true, I can take it from the pool on the outside of the game board. But note that you can only have one alliance per game, so choose wisely. Gaining an alliance will give you access to a passive benefit, which is a bonus that you gain for the rest of the game. In the course of MechaCore Incorporated, whenever I mine an asteroid, I gain one additional resource, which is pretty great. Then, I also have access to a faction favor, which is a powerful once-per-game usable ability. For MechaCore Incorporated, I shuffle the asteroid discard pile, and I mine two random asteroids from that pile, gaining those additional resources as well. That is a ton of resources, and then I flip over this card to show that the faction favor is grayed out and has been used. I still gain access to that passive benefit for the rest of the game, but I will never again get that faction favor. So choose the timing carefully as well. That's everything in the Greetings from Pluto expansion, so have fun playing and thanks for being a fan.